This meeting is being recorded. Hi, welcome to All Things Divorce podcast. I'm Lonnie, the host of All Things Divorce podcast, and today we have Marlene Pontrelli on our show, and we'll be talking about her book, uh, Daily Meditations for Healing from Divorce. So a little bit about Marlene is uh, Marlene is a certified specialist in family law at Dickinson Wright. Her practice focuses on all aspects of family law, uh, from financial matters to uh, child custody matters, which we call legal decision making and parenting time, uh, and all aspects of family law. Uh, besides her book, Healing from Divorce, book. She has authored several other books on divorce in Arizona, and I will put the link to those below. Um, also, uh, I'll provide a link for her this book too. Uh, she's licensed to practice in both Arizona and California. The information provided to you today is for entertainment purposes only. Marlene is only licensed to practice law in Arizona and California, and listening to this podcast does not create an attorney-client relationship with either me or Marlene. Uh, both of us have websites that I will put links to below. Um, okay, Marlene, how are you today? And thank you for being here. Thank you, Lonnie. I'm, I'm doing well. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you. So you've got this book, which I love. And I think, you know, after even talking to you further about it, it's so necessary. So talk to me about the name of the book is... Um, healing from divorce meditations for healing from from divorce which mm -hmm. as somebody who's been through a divorce i get it um but what was the purpose of this book so the purpose was really to give people some tools to help them move forward with the divorce or legal separation and you know really what we find on is that there are these two roads that you travel on in a divorce there's certainly that legal road which we're so familiar with as attorneys and that's there, and we're there to guide people, help direct decisions, provide them legal advice, rights, obligations with respect to the law. But what I found is that there's also an emotional road, and that road can be just as important as the legal road. Very difficult to start talking to people about their legal rights and obligations, and then start asking them questions like, well, what do you want the custody arrangements to be for the children? Or how do you want to deal with the marital residence? Do you want to sell it? Where do you want to move? You can't really start discussing those legal issues until you've taken care of the emotional issues as well. So that was the purpose of trying to give people the tools to help them move forward. You know, that's, that's so interesting because practicing for so many years, I'm very empathetic uh, to clients. And it's always, it hurts my heart when, when things aren't just going their way. And, and I think internally, I understood kind of what you're saying. And I tried to, you know, almost be their counselor for that. Um, but the way you phrase it is, is just so important that it is two different roads, two different, um, going the same direction sort of, but not necessarily at the same time or the same speed. Right, it, it does take some time time for the emotional road to catch up with the legal process, especially in cases where it comes out of the blue for some people that a divorce has been filed. And all of a sudden they find out that their spouse has either left the house or they end up being served with papers. And they may have realized that there were some issues in the marriage, but didn't realize it had got to that stage. And all of a sudden, they're being forced to seek legal advice or try to defend themselves in court and really have not dealt with the emotional aspects of that yet. And so that was part of the purpose was to give people those uh, that opportunity to see how they can address those emotional issues so that they really can address the legal issue as well. Uh, yeah, that's great. So does this take the place of counseling? No, no, not at all. Um, certainly, I think counseling plays and therapy plays a very important role in the divorce process if that people find that necessary. But oftentimes a therapist is, you see maybe once a week, sometimes you see them once a month. And this is really a tool to also help in the therapy process because it is structured so there are daily meditations that you can have a little bit of self-help for yourself so that when you do go to therapy or if you choose that um, to see a therapist, 
you have those that background already and you're already in between sessions taking care of yourself as well. That, that's, that's great. Um, so how did you come up with the idea of this book? What did that look like? It was really almost out of necessity. What I, what I found, Lonnie, was a lot of people wanting to talk about their marriage, wanting to, you mentioned the word, you know, counseling, and you know, we're not therapists, but wanting to be empathetic and listening to people, but not knowing really how to help them and help them once they, we got off the phone or they left my office and really wanted to see if there was something that I could do to help them daily that they would set aside six minutes a day, be able to meditate on certain aspects of themselves and what they need to do and see if that would, would help. And um, I think it has. And that was, that was the idea with respect to coming up with the divorce, a, a small book. Um, it's actually very, very thin. So they're just daily meditations that you can go through and help you and guide you and kind of be your friend along the way. Oh, okay. Um, and it, it is very short. I've read it. Um, I've read the meditations and they're great. And I sometimes have gone back pages. Do you ever, do you ever tell your clients, yeah, you need to go back to like uh, day 20? <laughs> well, so sometimes um, I, it's interesting you would say that because I have had um, clients um, indicate that there are certain passages that they really have focused on and that even after they're done with the meditations on the daily basis, going back to certain ones just to remind themselves and give them that little extra boost of motivation because it becomes their mantra. You know, right. That. And it's, it's uh, it gives you something positive to think about throughout the day too. Right. And I do tell um, people who read the book, underline things, circle things, highlight things that are important to you so that you can go back and see those passages or that um, inspiration that you might need on a particular day. Yeah, you do the dog ear, you know, folding the page over <laughs> so that you know where to go back. So, um, okay, so talk about how the book is structured. So it is structured on a year long process. It really takes almost a year from the time that you start the process of trying to be that self-healing till the end. So it is a daily meditation. You take it a step at a time. We ask that you set aside six minutes a day because we know how hard it is in a when you're working or you have children or you are have other household obligations to be able to take time for yourself. So six minutes a day read the meditation, follow the advice. We um, think it's best if you do it in the morning and really follow that advice to the day and then reflect on it in the evening. But if you can just commit to six minutes a day, that's all that the meditation requires for you. And are there stages that people go through through divorce? I mean, does this sort of hit the stages also? I guess that's two questions. Um, absolutely. You know, there is, especially with respect to divorce, it's it's a grief over a loss. There are, we start marriages with such love, hope, expectations. And regardless of whether it's you filing for the divorce and just recognizing that the marriage is over or it's your spouse, there's still a, a grieving loss. And so this book is designed to help with that that loss and how do you move forward dealing with the the current situation and your circumstances yeah and I you know I I've been divorced twice um and there's also anger I think right and a lot of fear that I that I think that I find with my clients that I think this book sort of helps them get through that I guess if right. you will um so what are the stages necessary for healing? So, you know, I, I just told said two, but what are they? And are they in order or do they kind of go back and forth? Yes, um, there, it, the book is structured into different stages. So it's really like climbing stairs. You start with stage one and hopefully by the end of the year, you've gotten to the top of the staircase. And if you need to, you go back a little bit and take a few steps backwards and, and continue going forward. But that first stage is always the self-love, that ability to love yourself and recognize that this is not your fault, regardless of what you've been told. Um, sometimes people are married to, and I'm not diagnosing anybody, but have narcissistic personalities 
there's a lot of control. There may be um, domestic violence, not just even physical violence, but the emotional abuse, the isolation of you, the demands and the stress that go with that, regardless of whether it's, it's male or female, but yeah. the stress involved in that. So that first stage is recognizing this isn't your fault, learning to love yourself and taking that step. Once we get past that step, then we're looking at acceptance, accepting your circumstances, what's involved in doing that, how do we come to terms with what our circumstances are now. The um, third step is that self-discovery. Um, we may be doing something, wanting to do something entirely different. What do we want to do with our life? How do, how do we move forward from here? Especially in long-term marriages where you are so tied to the other person. You know, how do you move forward with now your own self and that self-discovery of what you want? And then finally, the control. How do you take control of your future? And it's really not looking back, Lonnie, at all. It's more of at that stage, how do I move forward? Because I'm not going to look back. It's, it's in the past and we're going to move forward and getting us to that stage. So that's how the book is structured. And it is structured in terms of those four stages so that you are overcoming all of that past grief that um, has occurred in the marriage. Okay, and have you noticed differences in people who do read your books? I, I think you give them out to your clients, right? I do. So, um, and actually, I, I'm happy to provide copies for whoever might um, find the need for it, because the idea is um, is to really provide help um, for individuals. But it's been very um, rewarding in the sense of having individuals come back and say how much the book has helped them and how much they felt that they really did have somebody who understood what they were going through and taking the time for themselves because so many times we just don't take the time for ourselves right. and give us the the tools that we need to and, take care of us first and divorce is hard i mean divorce is is it's it's hard it hurts it's painful it it's difficult for kids i mean divorce is not easy so when you've got something like this you know a road map to kind of follow to sort of just you know put your nose down and, and read the book and do the do the meditations and follow that you know by by the time you know it by the time you kind of really get going you're there you know you're kind of there and you're caught up with the divorce right especially you know when you do have children it's hard because you're trying to take care of them. You want them to not be affected by the divorce because in, in reality, the, the most important people in the divorce are the children and making sure that they're not affected. But how do you do that when you are grieving so much yourself and then at the same time trying to put on this brave front for the children and not involve them in the divorce? So that first step of, of self-love and recognizing that you can do this that you are stronger than you think and being able to take that, eventually take that control helps not only just the children and yourself, but also all the people around you and that ability to open yourself up to receive the advice, receive the structure that you need, the emotional support you need from other people. And ultimately then the goal of being able to work with your attorney and talk about those issues of what is the custody arrangement going to be? What do we want to do with the house? Because now you're in control and you don't feel that your circumstances have controlled you. You're the one that's taking that positive step to control your own life. And so that's that's important. And, and that's what I found that people have found helpful with the book. Yeah, and I, you know, looking at the cases that I've done, sometimes when they're just so quick, parties are not ready. To make that decision parties are not ready to say you know a stay-at-home mom is not ready to say i'm fine with you know him having 50 50 parenting time because she's been the one doing that so there's so much you know you're right in 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 that there's there's so much to catch up with emotionally when we're sitting there you know the first thing we ask are asking is all right well what does this look like what do you want to have happen they're like i don't know i don't even want the divorce how do i know if i want to you know be 
house poor for the rest of my life and keep this big house that we've lived in, but you know, to keep my kids settled. There's just so many things to consider that when you give them this book to kind of hold their hand through it, it kind of can help them focus again. Would that is that kind of what you exactly. heard? Exactly. And, exactly. And, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was gonna say too, it's it's that self-discovery, right? Is if what is it that you really want? Because the house is usually a big issue. Our immediate response sometimes is, well, I want to keep the house. And I want to keep it because this is our home. And if the other spouse wants to leave the home, fine. But I'm not leaving the home because this is where I live and this is where the children are used to. And I know all the friends and people. But you may find through the process that your needs and wants have changed as well. So giving yourself the luxury of self-discovery and trying to find out what you want is important because your response may change from the first time you sat in your lawyer's office till when you finally are talking about the issues of how do we divide up assets and and how do we move on our separate ways so you get you give this book to your clients what is your feedback then the feedback's been excellent um it's some people will say they have to start and then they start and then they stop and then they have to go back to it. But those who have made it through, um, it's been a very positive change. The other thing, interesting, Lonnie, that I found that I had not really expected with clients, but I found um, if, if it works for them, great, is that sometimes they will just open the book to, they don't want to do the stages. They don't want to be tied into that six minutes a day. But if they're feeling particularly anxious on a, on a day, they'll just open up the book um, and, and read it. And so they'll look at this and, for example, this was day 159. I just opened it up to vow to make progress on the possibilities in your life. You know, how do you determine what possibilities in your life are out there? What steps can you take to attaining that? You know, go back and review certain um, aspects of it. it. It gives you a guide to how to do that particular um, mantra. So there are individuals who think about the book as a whole but would rather just take excerpts from it when they feel like they need it. And for whatever reason, it just guides them to open on a particular day and see that, that particular meditation to help them. So certainly that would be a way to utilize the book as well. Um, just on a daily basis, picking out different mantras that appeal to you and, and moving forward. And what are changes that you've noticed in clients? Like I, and I, going from maybe a client who was a victim of domestic violence, who is maybe hypersensitive to things um, and that they're, they're having a hard time moving forward because they are still really locked in the abuse and the, and the victimhood, the victimhood, is that the word? Um, in being a victim. Um, and and what, do you, how do you, what is the growth you see there? Right. Um, two, two major things. One is understanding and individuals recognizing that, gosh, if they wrote a book about it and there's all these examples, it must happen to other people too. And so there's that feeling of, I'm not alone in this. That's that a really this great point, by the way. Me. That's a that's a really great point. Sorry to interrupt you with that. I hadn't really even thought about that for that part of the book, but that's a really great point because victims do feel so alone. Okay, right. sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean yeah, to interrupt. Well, well, but, you're, but you're exactly right. You're, you feel alone and you feel isolated. And then when you realize there's others in my predicament as well, and there are places that I can go for resources and help, and it's not something to be embarrassed about. So I have found that to be um, one of the benefits. And then, and then the second benefit is there's a calmness to individuals from the time that I may have seen them and that very first meeting where you're anxious, you're afraid, you know, what's happening to my finances, what's happening to the house, what's happening to the kids. Um, you mentioned a really good point about, you know, if you've been the stay at home parent and you've been the one who've been primarily taking care of the children every single day and tucking them into bed every single night and reading them those bedtime stories how do you possibly go from that to then being told, well, your spouse may have 50% of the time. And so, you know, what do you, you're not, you're only going to get to do that half of the time. That's, that causes a lot of anxiousness in individuals. And what I have found is that by taking time 
rediscovering themselves, recognizing what they have control over, they're able to maintain a calmness then about it and address things in a way that, that either we can move forward in a direction that is more positive for them and try to obtain results that they can be at least, maybe not entirely happy with, but at least close to what they were expecting to occur and be able to talk about how we do that. How do we, how do we get them the result that they like, but understanding it in a way that we also have to address the law. And that's, that's been a benefit that individuals become much more calm within themselves. And you need that calmness to be able to address your life and your finances and your children. And, and I do, I, that's what I do love about the book too, is the calmness that it brings. Sometimes, you know, somehow it's just a nice guide. It, it's just a, I mean, I think meditations in and of themselves are, are meant to be that way, but, but I really did find that in that, that this is just a very, it has a calming effect because it's right in front of you, kind of telling you, kind of guiding you in what to do. Right. And, and one of the things is that I would like to see people do as well is maybe you don't, you don't have to wait until a divorce is filed or a legal separation to take the book. Sometimes you need to really start planning for that in advance, especially if you're the one that's thinking about filing. And that's a hard thing even sometimes to do. You know you want to do it. You know you need to do it. You know that would be the best for your own self-preservation and for your family. But it's hard to take that step. And so the book can also be utilized as a inspiration, motivation to help calm you, help you understand the situation, help you take control so that you have the strength to move forward in the direction that's best for you. Yeah, that's great. Well, um, I, I definitely appreciate the book and I um, appreciate you for being on here and talking about the book. Is there any other kind of tips you want to give um, about sort of the meditation process and getting through the divorce? Because one of the things that you said to me, again, was the catching up, which I had never after practicing 20 years, right? Over 20 years of practicing family law. I never really considered the catching up part to, you know, where we're just like, let's go get them. And sometimes you have clients like, what, what are we waiting for? Let's go get them. Why, are, why is this taking so long? But have you noticed if, it, if, if somebody's using your book um, that maybe they're okay with it taking a little longer because it's helping them work through the process? I, I think so, Lonnie. And one of the things that I think is so important is it took a long time most instances for people to, to decide to get married, we should give the same dignity to separating and a divorce that we gave and that same consideration that we gave into entering to this marriage. And so one of the things that I like to tell um, individuals is don't let anyone rush the process for you. They may have started the divorce, but it's not just a business transaction. It's a life. It is a ending of a relationship, a very intimate relationship, and don't be forced into the other person's agenda. Take time for yourself, take time to consider your options, take time for your own self-love and self-discovery. And if we need to put things on hold and we need to move things a little bit slower to get to the right result, we're going to do that because that's important. And I think the book helps them recognize that it's okay, that they too have a voice in all of this. They too have an equal voice in all of this, and they're going to be able to move forward, but it also has to be at their pace as well. And that's what the book also helps to explain is that need to slow things down if slowing things down is necessary and best for you. Yeah, that's great. Because I and I do, I mean, I believe that a hundred percent. You do have to let people go at their pace. Some people are, you know, a little slower to get through it. Some people are a little faster to get through it. Um, and those people might be married, right? right. Those people, you know, so that can be difficult. Now, interestingly, um, I I did get a um a uh, a company to do a, like a, a divorce package for me, like a spa package 
for me. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of an interesting thing for self-care. Again, still not really noticing it, but I think what, what might be really fun is to put your book in with that. Um, so we'll talk about that later because I would love to sort of get that out there for more people. That that sounds great. And, and the, the spa is sometimes, you know, just the thing that people need in order to yeah. not think about anything. Right. And sometimes that's one of the most important things. People will think, I don't know what to do. I'm overwhelmed by you're telling me I have to gather up um, bank statements and credit card statements and do an affidavit of financial information. I have to try to figure out a parenting plan. Sometimes it's nice to just take a day and not think about that. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's hard still be there tomorrow. <laughs> right. Yeah, it it is will. Hard. And it's hard to not think about things. I, I'm an overthinker. Um, I know there's a lot of people with anxiety these days, you know, and so, yeah, that right. definitely the, the meditation would be so helpful for that. And then maybe at a spa day. Um, okay. Well, Love thank that. you so much for being here and I'm going to stop recording now. Thanks, Lonnie.